So, um, after this impressive story, um, let me get started a little bit to go to our world, to digital innovation and uh, to the IT. And I actually, uh, uh, yesterday, I returned from the US. Um, I did a tour, uh, roughly about 10 days, to visit our customers over there. And I ended over here. Does somebody know what it is? Vegas, yes. And what is this building or attraction? The Sphere, exactly. Um, and I'm a nerd, I'm a tech guy, and I like this kind of stuff. And actually, this is the projection of uh, planet Earth. Um, and I visited uh, the Sphere last weekend. Um, and wow, man, oh my God, who has been there? Nobody? Then I will do the spoiler alert for you. Um, first of all, you two opened uh, the Sphere with a Dutch drummer. I don't know if you heard about it. But um, so the sphere is very impressive from the outside. But my God, when you enter the sphere, this is what happens. You are welcomed by a live, walking, talking, artificial intelligent robot. Many of them are inside the sphere. And you walk around and you see technology everywhere. Technology, technology, technology. It's about machine learning, it's about AI, it's about the latest speaker systems, it's about art, it's about architecture. And I am blown away how much innovation was brought together in one building, on one place on the earth. It's really outstanding. It cost 2.3 billion US dollars to build the sphere and to install all the technology. 2.3 billion dollar. Took a couple of years. And when I was there, I did a small calculation. And um, I asked around, and it turns out that during one week, there are more than one million visitors. They all pay 120 US dollar. So I paid 120 US dollar to get in and meet a robot. And with me, each week, Thousand, uh, sorry, one million visitors during the summertime. Later in the in, in the year, it will be a little bit less. Just the turnaround time, the ROI is rather fast when you do a small calculation. Um, while it's there, I also went to the first attraction in Vegas. Does anybody know the first attraction in Vegas? I have it on the next slide. Circus Circus. It was the first casino of the mob, and this picture I took is desolated. It's not there anymore. There are no visitors anymore. It's almost bankrupt if it is not already. So Circus Circus up in the north used to be in the 70s a huge attraction. But since the 70s, they didn't do anything about it. No renovation, no maintenance, no nothing. Just lower the price, lower the price, lower the price, boom, and they are out of business. People behind the sphere took over. That are the new attractions, people who actually innovated. Did somebody read, sorry, I had a jet lag, so actually I stood up at four o'clock. What do you do? You read noob.nl. Did somebody read the news this morning about the Japanese manufacturer for diapers? Yeah, it was interesting. A huge manufacturer of diapers announced, listen to this carefully, I will stop producing diapers, diapers for babies. I will only produce diapers for elderly people. Because from 700 million diapers a year, I go to 400 million diapers a year only for elderly people. No diapers for babies anymore. China announced, the same happens in our country. Actually, are you aware of this city in China? They built a complete city for millions of people years ago. Empty buildings, empty highways, empty schools, empty shops, a complete desolated city in the middle of China. What's happening here? There are simply no people. We have to produce more people.
That's an invite for somebody, maybe. Um, so that's maybe another thing what's going on when you talk about uh, innovation. Maybe we have to because there are simply no more people. In five years' time, we are lacking in the Netherlands, in five years' time, we are lacking in the Netherlands 70,000 people only in healthcare. We cannot fulfill the job vacancies anymore. And last but not least, when I think about why we have to innovate, it's about numbers, economical numbers. It's a simple fact. If you don't innovate, your costs will rise. They will continue rising up because people need to have salary, right? Indexation. Whilst, if you don't innovate, your revenue goes down because your competitor, think about the sphere, they will gain market, they will gain customers, they will gain more revenue if you don't go along with it. So three reasons for us why we think organizations should innovate are very simple. First of all, you have to stay ahead of the game. You have to beat your competitor. You have to beat the competition. Circus Circus was not aware of it and they go bankrupt. So I think the first driver for innovation is beat out the competition, be outstanding, find your USP again. Secondly, what I just mentioned, the lack of skilled people, the lack of personnel. You maybe don't like it, but if you want to grow, if you want to go to market, you need people to produce output. And when there are no people, there is only one revenue, and that is called IT. So only with IT-based innovations, you can overcome the gap of the lack of people, skilled people. And last but not least, the third reason why I urge you all to start innovation is the economical part, as I mentioned. Maybe you innovate to lower costs, to be more cost effective, or to raise revenue by uh, finding new markets, by finding new digital platforms where you can sell your service or sell your product. And I think, I strongly believe that those three reasons should be enough for each and any company in the world to innovate, reinvent yourself. And innovation doesn't need to be um, like Uber. You don't, don't have to be disruptive. People sometimes think it needs to be big, it needs to be um, uh, 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 a high, huge impact on the society. But look back to the story of the TU Delft. Small things. What was it, um, Lars? 16 gram all around the car already is something. It's a little step with a huge impact in the outcome out, uh, in the end. So I also think innovation can be, by, by a continuous uh, a governance and continuous processes, small steps, all together will drive innovation in the end as well. It doesn't have to be a big bang. It doesn't have to be a reinvention of your own company or yourself. Small steps are also part of the journey of innovation. So when we now are on the same page, why? Let's focus on how, um, how to innovate. And I've narrowed it down to uh, my cup of tea, and that is IT, and that's in the end middleware. Um, and what I think is uh, what makes a company a company in the end. And it's not my story. I, a lot of times I uh, have the privilege to talk to many, many, many of our customers. And honestly speaking, I think that I have the best job in the world. You probably think that of yourself as well. But why do I say it for myself? I go up to those, these customers, I just went to the US, and CEOs, CTOs, lead engineers, they're telling me their dreams. They're telling me their challenges. They're telling me their failures. Actually, they tell me their emotions for success, but also for failures. And Somehow, they rely on my opinion. Somehow, they value my insights. So what I'm telling here today, it's not about me, it's not about Yenlo, it's about the insights I want to share, the common practice of all of these locals behind me.
So it's not my story, it's the story of the people behind these logos. And what do they tell? What makes you a company in the end? And I think that is for everybody the same. A company is made by what you own. What do you own? You own data. You own intelligence. You don't own applications. You don't own processes. That are just means. In the end, one of your USPs is data. The knowledge, your intelligence. And what we did in the past years, the data, yeah, it should be exposed, it should be uh, manipulated by services, yeah, ESB, microservices, whatever. So one part of innovation is data, that is your USP. It should be exposed by services. Of course, a service should be uh, uh, fronted by an API, and API should be secure, right? So we think, we strongly believe in Yenlo that a key pillar when it comes down to digital innovation, you should address what can I do with my data? And the data should be exposed and, uh, and, and guarded by services, APIs, and integrations. So what we did, what we thought, with all the logos I uh, presented, is, um, uh, and what, what we advise to customers, when your data is consistent, your application landscape change, and your processes can be tweaked during time, uh, based on market demands, based on new customer IDs, based on new channels. So what you have to do when you dream about digital innovation, be assured that you choose for the maximum f uh, flexibility. Because I know one thing for sure, in the coming three, five, eight, ten years, things will change. And what you don't want is a lock-in. A vendor login, technology login, financial login, knowledge login. You want to avoid lock-ins. So try to choose for the maximum flexibility when it comes to services, API, and, 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 and identity management. Secondly, choose for a best-of-read approach yeah, to avoid lock-ins. Yeah? Pick and choose. Should be able to pick and choose the technology which suits your business case or your company the best. And if you don't like it, you should be able to get rid of it and exchange it with other technology. So flexibility, best of breed. That are things, ingredients we value when we talk about digital innovation. And last but not least, we strongly believe you cannot beat the cloud anymore. The cloud is fast, cheaper, more secure, more reliable than doing it on your own on-premises. There are a few exceptions. Of course, there are some companies, government bodies, who really need to be on-prem, but then at least choose for a an, an, an high-end containerization to make you more flexible in the end. So we believe when you value your data, your USP, and you garden that and expose that with services, APIs, and identity management, and taking these three pillars into consideration, you should come to the ultimate integration platform. You should come to the ultimate set of technology, a set of governance processes, a set of people. Hey, that were the three ingredients for innovation. And we did it with our own Connex platform. So our own Connex platform is actually the combination of these three technologies with the, these three IDs behind it. Um, Today, uh, Marcel will present the uh, Corona Check App, the GGD uh, customer case. And that is one of the cases, uh, one of the customer cases uh, running and uh, driven by uh, the, the Connex platform. Um, so, to wrap it up, a nice picture of the world of, uh, of tomorrow. Our customers, they dream big. Uh, actually, I generated one with uh, Dali. Does somebody know Dali? It's awesome. Also, the candle and the light bulb came from Dali last, uh, ni last night. I did it in the plane. Um, it's, it's, it's actually great. Um, and I asked uh, Dali, draw me a picture of five, in five years' time where IT, the world, ecosystem all comes together. And this is the picture artificial intelligence gave me. And it's just a gimmick, of course, but Look at it. It's again a combination of people, of technology, and governance processes all come together and drive innovation.